Nick here and today you will learn how to play Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders is a card development game for 2 to 7 players with an average play session of 1 hour. Let's start with the setup. Take the cards and sort them by age and return to the box all cards which are not used based on the number of players. Example: In a 4 player game only the plus 3 and plus 4 cards are used. The plus 5, plus 6 and plus 7 cards are returned to the box. Then remove all the guild cards, which are the purple cards, and randomly and secretly keep only the number required based on the number of players, like displayed on the screen. Then shuffle the kept guild cards with the other cards from the age 3 deck, and shuffle the other decks too. Take the 7 wonder cards and shuffle them face down, hand one to each player to determine which wonder they will be using. Give the wonder board according to the cards. For your first game you should be using side A of the boards, as they are simpler to use. Give 3 coins for each player, the remaining coins go to the bank. And now you're ready to learn how to play. The game is played over 3 ages. You score points at the end of age 3, by building structures and the wonder. To start, take the age 1 deck and deal the cards randomly, so that each player has 7 cards each. Players look at their hands without showing it, and select one card, placing it face down before them. There are three possible actions with the chosen card. The first one is building structures, which players will be doing most of the time. Before we talk about building structures, let's talk about building cost. Some cards have no cost. These are the cards that have no symbols on the left top corner. Some cards cost a coin, which must be paid to the bank on the turn they are played. Other cards have a resource cost. The resources of a city are produced mostly by playing brown and grey cards. In this example, Ephesos produces 1 glass, 2 wood, 2 stone, 1 iron and 1 parchment. Resources are not spent during production, they can be used each turn for the entire game. The production of a city is never reduced, which means the cards will never be discarded. Players can also obtain the missing resources from their neighboring cities on the right and on the left by paying 2 coins for each resource. For example, to build this structure, the player on the right needs 1 brick, which they do not have. The player on their left has the resource, so they pay 2 coins to that player to get the resource. Players can never refuse to sell resources and selling a resource does not prevent another player from using it this turn. There are also cards that can be built for free, if you have the corresponding structure from a previous age. In this example, the study can be built for free if the player has previously built the school. Now that you know how to pay for the structures, let's talk about what they do. As previously stated, brown and grey cards give resources. For example, this card gives one stone. If the card has a slash between resources, it means that every turn the player gets to choose which resource it will be among the ones in the card. Neighbors can choose among those resources as well. Resource cards are placed under the wonder board above the city's initial resources, like this. Next comes the civilian structures, or the blue cards. They score victory points at the end of the game, and are played in front of the wonder board. I like to place them under it. The commercial structures, or yellow cards, can change commerce, earn coins, produce resources or earn victory points. This symbol means that starting on the turn following the one in which this was produced, the player purchases resources listed on the card from the neighboring cities, indicated by the arrows, for one coin instead of two coins. Commercial structures are played in front of the wonder board. Military structures or red cards increase your military might, with each shield symbol. This comes in play during the conflict resolution, which I will explain later on. They are also played in front of the wonder board. The last structure type is the scientific structure, or the green cards. They score victory points according to the number and variety of symbols collected by the end of the game. There are three symbols you can collect. The gear, the compass and the stone tablet. They are also played in front of the wonder board. This ends the first action of building structures. The second action you can do instead of the first one is building a stage of the wonder. Each wonder has three stages at the bottom part of the board. 
You start building from the left to the right, and each stage built gives some bonuses. To complete the wonder, the player needs to build its three stages. Each stage has a building cost, which is written next to the bonus granted. For example, the first stage of this wonder costs two stones and gives three victory points at the end of the game. The second part costs two wood and gives nine coins at the moment it is built. And the third stage costs two parchments and gives seven victory points at the end of the game. Make sure you have the resources built to build prior to make this action. In my case, I will buy the two stones from my neighbors on the right and left. To build the stage, pick the card you choose for the round. Use a card that you don't want your opponents to have. Then play the card face down, half hidden under the wonder board to show that the stage is built. The card has no other effect and is not considered to be a structure. Let me quickly go through the stage 2 of the other cities because they also have special abilities. Giza, second stage, gives 5 victory points at the end of the game. Alexandria produces a unit of one of the four raw materials pictured in the card. They cannot be bought by neighboring cities. Rhodos grants two extra military might. Olympia allows the players to build one structure from their hand for free per age. Babylon grants an extra scientific symbol at the end of the game. And Alicarnassos allows the player to look at the discarded cards, pick one and build it for free one time. The third action you can do instead of the other two is discarding a card to get three coins. To do so, take the card and place it face down in the center of the table. Try discarding cards that you cannot build or that you don't want your opponent to have. Then get three coins from the bank. Note that this action is mandatory if the player cannot play the card they picked or build a stage of the wonder. Once each player decided action and card to play, they place the card face down before them. The remaining cards are placed between their left hand neighbor and themselves at age 1, as in the example. Then each player reveals their cards and play them. After playing, each player takes the hand of cards handed from his or her neighbor and the turn repeats until there are only two cards left on the player's hands. Each player then chooses one card, like in the previous turns, and the second one is discarded face down. Then the age ends, and the players go for military resolution. Each player compares the total number of shield icons on their military structures with the other two neighboring cities. In this example, my neighbor on the right has two shields, while I have only one. So because I have less shields, I get a defeat token worth minus one point. But when fighting my neighbor on the left, I have one shield and they have none. So I win the conflict earning a victory token. The player on the left lost the battle against me, but also against their neighbor on the left, getting a defeat token for each neighbor. My neighbor on the left gets a win against me and his neighbor on the right earning two age 1 victory tokens. At age 1, victory tokens give plus 1 victory point, at age 2 they give plus 3 victory points, and at age 3 they give plus 5 victory points. Defeat tokens always give minus 1 point, and it does not matter the age you are playing. After the conflict resolution has ended, take the deck from the second age and follow the same steps used for age 1. The only difference is that when passing the hand of cards, players will pass them to the right-hand neighbor, instead of the left. Age 3 follows the same logic for passing cards as Age 1. Age 3 also introduces the guild cards, which grant victory points according to the cards or actions you have done throughout the game. These guild cards will give victory points for every card of the stated color that your neighbors on the right and left have at the end of the game. The Builder's Guild gives one victory point per wonder stage building the neighboring cities and in your own city. Shipowner's Guild gives one victory point for each brown, gray and purple card in your city. Strategist's Guild give one victory point for each defeat token in the neighboring cities. Scientist's Guild give the player an extra scientific symbol of their choice at the end of the game. Once you play through the age 3, 
and resolve the conflict resolution, the game ends and it's time to score. Take the booklet of scorecards and let's score the points. Let's use this board as example. Count the victory points in this order. Military conflicts. Each player adds their victory and defeat tokens. I have a total of 6 points. Treasure tokens. For every 3 coins in your possession, the player earns 1 victory point. I have none, so it's 0 points. Wonder. Each player adds the wonder victory points. I have 3 from stage 1 and 7 from stage 3 for a total of 10 points. Civilian structures. Each player adds the victory points for the blue cards. I have a card with 2 and a card with 6 for a total of 8 points. Scientific structures require some explanation. Each group of 3 different symbols scores 7 points. Then count how many symbols of the same type you have and square it. In this example, I have one tablet symbol, so 1 squared equals 1. I have two gears, which squared gives 4 points, and I have four compasses, which squared gives 16 points. So green cards can score you a lot of points. In this example, we have a group of three different symbols, so 7 points, plus two gears, which squared gives 4 points, and one of the other two symbols, which squared gives 1 point each, for a total of 13 points. Commercial structures. Some commercial structures for age 3 grant victory points. I don't have any, so it's 0 points. And for last, we check the guilds. They give victory points depending on the configuration of your city and that of your neighboring cities. I have no guild cards, so 0 points. This brings my total to 37 points. The player with the most points wins. In a case of a tie, the player with the most coins wins. And that's how you play 7 Wonders. If you have any questions, check the FAQ in the video's description or leave a comment. On my channel, you can find other how to play videos and board game first impressions and unboxing. If you're new to my channel, welcome and consider subscribing to receive the latest how to play video updates. See you next time.